time, but the other thing we didn't really get to is git branching. So if I run the command git branch, you'll see right now this lists all the branches. I only have one branch, it's called master, and the star next to it tells me that's the branch that's currently loaded. You can actually make another branch uh, by doing git branch and then typing in some name, and then you can switch to it by doing git checkout, the name of the branch, so I could do git branch, and I could call this branch test, right? So like if I want to put some, often your master branch, like if you work on big projects, your master branch is stable. You only ever put code into the master branch if you know it works. So you don't actually develop in the master branch, you have separate development branches that you're developing in. So I can call this branch test, so I can do get branch test. Now if I want to get branch, I have two, but I'm still on the master branch. So to switch to that test branch, I need to do a get checkout, test, and now if I do get branch, you'll see the stars next to the test, that means I'm on the test branch. So now if I start doing changes and commits, it's only gonna make those changes to this test branch. The other thing to note is when you do a branch like this, you have to manually push it to GitHub. So right now GitHub only knows about my master branch. So I need to do git push origin. So remember origin is the alias for GitHub in this case. And then, whereas before we said master, now I'm gonna say test. So this is gonna push my test branch. Okay? Um, so let's make, I'm gonna make a quick change just in this branch. So I'm gonna do touch another file, right? So I'm going to do git add another file, git commit, dash in, add a new file, and now if I do git push origin, I think I, I think I can actually just do git push because it should remember the last, if you do it by itself, it'll remember the last thing you did. So now that I'm on the test branch, it's going to know that. Um, but now if I go look at GitHub, and if I look at my, oh, let me go back to our project. So if I go back to here, and if I look at this network, so a couple of things. Now if I look at the branch dropdown, you'll see there are two branches here. I can switch between them. When I switch to this one, when I switch to this one, you'll see that new file that only exists in this branch shows up. So these branches are essentially like separate copies of the code. If I look at the network graph now, and if I refresh it, because it's actually kind of slow to refresh, we'll see, uh, you can hit T, we'll turn these labels on and off. These are labeling the heads of each branch. So the head of the test branch is now a little bit ahead of the master branch. So there's also what's called git merge. So if I did some development in my test branch, I got a new feature working, and then that I want to bring that feature back into the master branch, you need, need to do what's called a git merge. So what you do is you want to check out the branch you want to merge it into. So I'm going to do git checkout master. And then I'm going to do git merge, and I want to merge this with test. And now if I do a git file, uh, cool. So now this, another file is in this branch here. If I had, I didn't do the ls, but if I'd done the ls right after I checked out the master before I merged, this wouldn't have been here. It basically will disappear any files that aren't in the branch there. So when you check out a branch, it dynamically changes all of the files to match that branch for you automatically. But now I merged these branches back together. Uh, I can now do a git push origin master again. And that'll push essentially my merge up to GitHub. And now if I look at GitHub again, and if I refresh this again, we will now see that that deviation disappeared, right? If I made changes, the reason it disappeared altogether is because I made no changes in the master branch. So it could essentially collapse the branch altogether. If I made commits in master and commits down here, you would see it, and then you would see it link back up. But because there were no commits in master, it could just collapse them altogether in its graph. But essentially, it now moved all of the commits I had in my test branch and emerged into my master branch. So branches actually come really handy. Also when you work with teams, often what you do is each person will have their own dev branch and that'll help avoid these merge conflicts. So then you only have to deal with merge conflicts once when you guys all decide to merge your code together and not you know, every time you commit and push, which you should be doing frequently just to keep your code up to date and nothing else. Um, so you'll say, I mean, I'll have like an AMD dev branch and you'll have a, you know, whatever dev branch and you'll each work in your dev branch, then you guys will come together, like have a one hour meeting, figure out how to merge all the code together together, instead of having to deal with these merge conflicts on push pulls. All right guys, that's the end of our time. That's the tip of the iceberg of Git, but it's a great tool and I would encourage you guys all to use it. Uh, and 
It's the kind of thing where if you just start using it with all your projects now, you start learning it pretty quickly. Um, you will find in computer science this is not obscure, like you're going to get to the point if you haven't already where your teammates are going to expect you to know Git, or maybe now you guys are the teammates that expect everyone else to know Git, because coordinating team projects without something like Git is a royal pain in the ass. Um, and if you ever find yourself emailing code to someone, you should stand up, take a drink, and wonder what you're doing with your life. Because we went to a lot of effort to create much nicer ways of doing that. If it's called Git, you should use it. All right, thanks a lot, guys. I can stick around for questions for a few minutes. Uh, I haven't posted it yet, but next week we're actually going to be doing a um, HTTP command line type tools. So this would be like Git curl, stuff like that. Um, and then the week after that, I think Patrick's going to be doing some website web dev type stuff, right? Okay. Does, did you email me? Yeah, but what was Jackie doing? Yeah, she Jackie's doing the stuff next week. She wants to write, She wants to focus more on the protocol side. So oh, okay. I said you wanted. I mean, I assume you want to focus more on the actual writing code that does web stuff side. Yeah. Okay. Good. It divvies up nicely then. So okay. Jack is going to go next week, and I'll be good with that. Okay. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. Have a good next week. These videos will be online later.